and thanks for joining us. The French artist JR has presented his latest performance in New York, which powerfully illustrates the struggle of women in Iran. The work shows the face of a 16-year-old girl who died during the protests. Her hair is formed by volunteers. Nika Shakarami was found dead more than a week after disappearing during Iran's ongoing demonstrations. Stay aware of... Giving a voice to Iranian women and their demands. That's what the artist JR is looking to do in this New York park. On the ground is his recreation of Nika Shakarami, a 16-year-old protester who died after a demonstration in late September. We got in touch with Nika's family and her aunt sent us this portrait of her. It was one of the last images of her on social media which wasn't deleted. It meant a lot to the family that it was that photo. That's what we began using two weeks ago in Brazil and now here in New York. Women, life, freedom. Slogans shouted by the protesters in Iran and repeated here in a show of solidarity. Here in the US, um, we use our freedom and we are trying to amplify their voice and try to affect the public opinion here so they can push the government and uh, they can stop this regime. The performance is part of the Eyes on Iran campaign. The initiative aims to bring about the expulsion of the Islamic Republic from the United Nations' Commission on the Status of Women vote for this is scheduled for December 14th. Next, as a child, she was accused of witchcraft because of her drawings and forced to undergo exorcisms. Today, Congolese artist Geraldine Tobe paints with smoke to exercise the pain of her country's colonial past. Her latest exhibition is on in Brussels at the Lever House, a building that stands as a reminder of Belgium's colonisation of DR Congo. For 30 years, from 1920, it was used to make soap using a process that exploited the Congo's palm groves and local communities. Her hope is that her art will help with the reconciliation process between the two countries, as Chris Moore and Alex Le Bourdon report. <laughs> Somber, sometimes frightening, these faces appear to come from another world. Like ghosts returning to haunt this building, a relic of Belgium's colonial past. But when this young Congolese artist decided to exhibit her works here, it was the future she was looking to. Putting on this exhibition in this historically charged building proves that there's a process underway. For me, it's a way of bringing Belgium and the Congolese people together. Yet just a few decades ago, these walls served as a trading post for a soap business importing Congolese palm oil. This building symbolises the exploitation of an entire country. But now we see this great young artist who somehow manages to transcend this history. Turning suffering into beauty is something Geraldine learned early on. She remembers suffering exorcism by fire when, as a child, she was accused of witchcraft. When I started painting a smoke, I realized that smoke was just part of my life coming back to me. Today, smoke allows Geraldine to explore an array of challenging themes. This painting is an allegory for extreme violence in Congolese society. If you look closely, you can see this man is much stronger than the second one. The second one doesn't know how to deal with it, but he's intent on destroying him. In a few weeks, this young artist will head back to Kinshasa, having given a voice to the past in Brussels. Next, despite the millions of views and streams, online rap from Africa gets little media attention here in Europe. Now, a Paris-based music platform is working to change that. Grunt's documentary series, Grunt Tour, introduces us to some of the continent's most talented rappers. Loïc Chalavon and Emerald Maxwell report. Grunt is most well known for its freestyle. That's become its trademark. But now it's going further, exploring rap from elsewhere. 
on est à Casablanca. C'est le Grand Tour, c'est le premier jour, c'est parti. The documentary series takes us to Africa, from Morocco to Nigeria via Mali. Senegal and the Ivory Coast. The Grand Tour is really about always trying to renew our curiosity. If you stop being curious, there's no point in producing a music platform. Sometimes we get it right, sometimes we don't. But the idea is to get out there and to go where something's happening so that we can take its pulse. And there's a lot to cover. Because the rap scene on the African continent is thriving, inspired by American and European rap culture, but above all, its rappers draw on their own country's musical traditions and trends. When you hear the way Malians rap, it's nothing like the way Ivorians rap. In Ivory Coast, they use a slang, nuchi, with punchlines that are supposed to be more funny than hard-hitting, like we're used to hearing here. Local dialects are also key to developing each country's own musical identity. From Nouchi in the Ivory Coast to Darija in Morocco and Bombara in Mali. On essaie de genre de créer un genre de jargon propre au Bombara. Okay. Même si la personne ne connaît pas la langue, ouais. il faut qu'il capte vite fait ce son là ça vient du Mali. Bara et Bofa, Blago et Bassa, Bolongo no Fanga Diago et Babonia, Rente et Bimbolo, MCNI et Fla. Grunt Tour can be found on Grunt's YouTube channel. Platforms built up a dedicated following of more than 200,000 subscribers and clocked up nearly 39 million views since launching at the end of 2011. Definitely worth watching. Now, Mexico is reclaiming its indigenous heritage after accusing some big international brands of cultural appropriation. Last month, Ralph Lauren apologised for selling a coat which allegedly copied Mexican sarape designs. The US fashion chain was accused of plagiarism by the Mexican first lady as well as a culture minister. Mexico has aimed similar complaints at other big brands in recent years, including French labels Louis Vuitton and Isabel Morant and high street stores Zara and Mango. The workload is tremendous. The tools are basic, but the result is 100% handmade. In this small workshop, traditional clothing has been made for two generations and it's where Arcadio carries on his father's legacy. I started working at the age of eight. I remember that it used to come up to there on me. My father was the one who taught me everything. He worked all his life in the fabric business. It's very exciting if you have the love and the passion for the work. The Sarape designs originate from the village of Contla, in the state of Tlaxcala. In October, Beatriz Gutierrez Muller the wife of the Mexican president used social media to accuse the American brand, Ralph Lauren, of plagiarizing these designs. Indigenous communities also denounce cultural appropriation. It's a world-famous company. They earn millions. While here, the weavers sometimes even can't afford to buy the raw material to continue creating their products. They come to rip off the designs of artisans who sometimes finish pieces that they won't even be able to sell. They make a coat and will produce millions of copies. To support Mexican designers, the government last year launched the original festival in Mexico City. Fashion shows, sales areas and conferences allow artisans to meet and better defend the craftsmanship. We must try to better protect the techniques, the embroidery, the history of what we do, because in the end the artisans invent them and we know the meanings of these designs. The Mexican government is very active in denouncing all forms of plagiarism and calls on international brands to collaborate ethically with the craft workers. Respect is being built, and it is a value that the industry must incorporate into its practices. It's an ethical call to this industry that is so voracious as fashion can be, but it's an industry of creation, imagination, originality. They should understand better than anyone that you can't appropriate this or plagiarize that, that it's not inspiration. 
In addition to collaboration, the damage must be repaired. Last August, a Japanese brand, also accused of plagiarism, agreed to pay $50,000 to countless craft workers. And just before we go, Egypt's Giza pyramids provided the backdrop for the latest menswear collection from the French fashion house Dior. The dramatic location set the stage for a show which drew inspiration from the founder Christian Dior's fascination with stars and symbols. The collection is called Celestial. We'll leave you with that. Thanks for watching. See you next time.